Over the past couple years, housing affordability has severely declined in New Zealand. The price of the average home in New Zealand has exploded, rising from just 728,000 at the start of 2020, which is already crazy, to a whopping 1.05 million just two years later in 2022. With the average increase in price of $400 a day, homeowners up and down the country have effectively been making more from their houses than they have from working. And to make it even worse, in most cases, it's even tax-free. Having just bought a home myself, I wanted to share absolutely every possible advantage currently on offer to first home buyers. This includes everything from below market house prices, grants, free money and co-ownership models that are common overseas. I was in the exact same position as many of you are when I first started looking, thinking how the hell am I going to be able to afford my own home one day? But I tried to qualify for as many of these as I could to ensure I got to the position I'm in now. If you like this video and want to see more videos just like this, please make sure to subscribe down below. Let's get into it. Let's start with one of the most obvious ones and get it out of the way, KiwiBuild, which was launched in 2018 with the initial aim of building 100,000 homes within the first 10 years of the program. Ignoring the fact, of course, that this ambitious goal has since been shelved, homes are still being built under the scheme and it remains one of the most beneficial ways to afford a newly built home, at a substantial discount to the market value. The KiwiBuild scheme operates under a ballot system, which simply means they draw a name from a hat and give that person the first right to purchase a home. Prior to opening the ballot, they'll post a link on their website and mail those who are signed up to their newsletter. If you haven't done this, make sure you do to stay on top of all the future ballot rounds. The link on the website will have a lot of information about the home under the ballot, such as where it is, how many rooms it has, the price and a lot of other useful information for deciding whether you want to enter the ballot. They also contain the contact details for the agents representing the property, so make sure you reach out to them and ask for an information pack and any questions you might have about the house. Usually they'll be really busy, so I find an email usually works best, and they're usually really prompt at replying. Once you've done your research on the house, and provided you've already signed up on the KiwiBuild website, you'll be able to apply for however many properties they're selling, which is usually more than one. Now, before getting too excited, to enter the KiwiBuild ballots, you'll need to apply and verify your eligibility for KiwiBuild directly with Kainga Aura, which you can easily do from their website. The current eligibility is the following. You must be older than 18. You must also be a New Zealand citizen, a PR, or a resident visa holder. You must also not currently own a home in New Zealand or overseas, and you must earn less than 120,000 a year if you're a single purchaser, or if there's more than one of you, then you'll need to earn less than 180,000. If you meet these requirements, you may be eligible and should explore applying for a KiwiBuild home. The only condition to buying is that you must live in the property for at least one year if it's a one bedroom property, or at least three years if it's more than one bedroom. To get an idea of how profitable applying can be, there is currently a ballot open for a three-bedroom townhouse in Mount Eden, Auckland for $650,000. If we look at the recent sales near this property, which are also three-bedroom houses, you can see they are easily selling for over a million dollars. Of course, there are many factors to consider here, such as the fact that these sales are for standalone and not terraced homes, but it gives an idea of how much cheaper these houses can be. Now, moving on from Kiwi Build Homes is the First Home Partner Co-Ownership Scheme. This is another scheme offered by Kainga Aura, which allows you to co-purchase your home with the government. Shared ownership schemes just like this are a common practice overseas, but it is relatively new in the New Zealand market. Effectively, this scheme enables you to purchase a home that is more expensive than what you could afford by just relying on your deposit and what the bank is willing to lend you. Say for example, you have a deposit of $50,000 saved up, but the bank is only willing to lend you up to $375,000. Ordinarily, you could only afford a $425,000 home. The First Home Partner Scheme, however, would be able to contribute an additional $75,000, enabling you to instead purchase a home worth $500,000. The amount covered under the scheme, therefore, represents 15% of the purchase price of the property, meaning Kainga Aura would effectively own 15% of the house. By entering into the co-ownership scheme, you own and maintain the property, However, Kainga Aura will allow you to purchase their 15% share back over the next 15 to 25 years. It's important to highlight here that as the price of your home appreciates, so too does Kainga Aura's share that you'll need to pay off. However, as you won't be paying interest on the amount that they have financed, you will be saving in interest costs as you haven't had to get a bank loan for that extra $75,000. Kainga Aura do cap the scheme, however, financing the lower of both $200,000 or 25% of the property's purchase price. To be eligible for the scheme, you'll need to have at least a 5% deposit for a property. Like KiwiBuild, you'll need to live in the house for at least three years, 
and you'll need to sign up at their website using the same portal as KiwiBuild, and I'll include a link to that down below in the description. The third way to get free money to buy a home is the First Home Grant, also called the Home Start Grant. This scheme is again run by Kainga Aura, however this time it really is free money. Provided the home you're buying is under a purchase price cap, depending on how long you've been contributing to KiwiSaver, you might be able to claim up to $20,000 absolutely free. The eligibility criteria is rather extensive and conditional on the type of property you're looking to buy, so I apologise in advance for how long these details are going to get. For a newly built home, you'll receive $2,000 per person per year you've been contributing to KiwiSaver, provided you've contributed for a minimum of three years and a maximum of five years. For an older home, this amount is half to just $1,000 per year you've been contributing. To be eligible, you must be older than 18, not currently own property in New Zealand or overseas, have at least a 5% deposit, agree to live in the home for at least six months, the property price must be lower than the regional caps, which I'll share shortly, and your income must be less than 95,000 if you're a single buyer, or 150,000 if there's more than one of you. The cap requirements I mentioned before are shown here, and as you can see, they're pretty low for today's buoyant market. In Auckland, for example, a cap of 700,000 would allow you to purchase a small terrace home or apartment to qualify, but it would also include many of the homes that are sold under the schemes discussed in this video. If you're looking to simply get onto the ladder by purchasing a less expensive home that's under these caps, making full use of the various schemes discussed in this video, the first home grant is definitely something you should consider applying for, as at the end of the day, it's free money. The first home grant's eligibility requirement of having contributed to KiwiSaver for at least three years provides a perfect segue into the fourth way to get free money to buy a home, and that of course is KiwiSaver. KiwiSaver stands as New Zealand's leading investment retirement scheme, with the average balance sitting around 29,000 in 2022. Many of you will be aware that you can withdraw your KiwiSaver balance, less $1,000, when it comes time to purchase your first home. But did you know just how powerful a tool it is when you factor in that you're essentially doubling your savings when you contribute? When you opt to contribute 3% of your salary to KiwiSaver, by law your employer must match your contribution, meaning if you put in a dollar, your employer must too. Easy money, right? But it doesn't end there. For the first $1,042 you contribute each year, the government will also come to the party and contribute an extra 50 cents for every dollar that you put in. So that's a lot of numbers, let's boil that down. Under the cap of 1,042 that you personally contribute each year, for every $1 that you put into the KiwiSaver, you'll effectively get $2.50, which is a return of 150%. And all the contributions above 1,042, you're effectively getting $2 for just putting in one dollar. So as you can see, this is huge, and over 10 years could add up to more than 15 and a half grand of free money to go towards your deposit, on top of the amount you're already contributing. For first home buyers, KiwiSaver is one of the biggest components to their deposit, and it is clear to see why, and especially so, as there aren't many prohibitive restrictions to eligibility, like there is for many of the other options highlighted in this video. Moving along, like KiwiBuild mentioned earlier, there are another two schemes currently up and running which allow first home buyers to purchase homes at below market value. The first of which is the Access Series Homes Program, which is run out of Hobsonville Point in Auckland. To date, over 1,000 affordable homes have been sold through the scheme by the Hobsonville Land Company at prices under 650,000. This is significant as house prices in Hobsonville Point have soared in recent years up to even past a million dollars for just a two bedroom townhouse. Like KiwiBuild, these homes are awarded based on a ballot system, so make sure you register your eligibility in advance of a ballot. The most recent ballot under the scheme was in March, when 16 one bedroom apartments were sold for $500,000 under the ballot. To be eligible for an access series home, you must be a New Zealand citizen or permanent resident, commit to living in the house for a minimum of two years, haven't owned any property in New Zealand or overseas, have a pre-approval for each ballot entered, and have an income less than $85,000 for a single buyer, or if there's more than one of you, your combined income must be less than $130,000. So this can be a great option if you're looking at buying in the growing northwest area of Auckland. A similar scheme is one that is run by Fletcher Living under their Affordable Housing Initiative, which most recently has offered homes at a slight discount to their market value in both Whanuapai and Mangare. To be eligible for these homes, you agree to live in the houses for a minimum of three years. The applicants must have a household income less than 120,000, are a New Zealand citizen or PR, and have never owned property either in New Zealand or overseas. To apply for future releases, make sure to subscribe to Fletcher's mailing list. The eighth way to get free money to buy a home 
is by applying through the tenant ownership program offered by Kainga Ora, which allows state home tenants to purchase the home that they occupy, with the added benefit of receiving a grant of up to 20,000 or 10% of the purchase price. If you're not occupying a state home, unfortunately this option is not available to you. In addition, the house must be located in an area with a relatively low demand for state housing. So this rules out many of the large centres in New Zealand, including Auckland, Hamilton, Tauranga, Wellington and Christchurch. So in conclusion, there are many resources available to those looking to buy their first home, particularly if you're looking to purchase a starter home, earn under the income thresholds and have been contributing to KiwiSaver for a number of years. You can also explore whether you're eligible for low deposit loans by looking into the first home loans and Kainga Whenua loan schemes. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please make sure to subscribe to the channel down below to see more videos just like this. Make sure to drop a comment down below if there was anything that I missed or tell me about your own stories of how you bought your first home as this may help others in a similar position looking to buy their first property. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers.